hopefully came up with something here. If you have A equals S squared, uh, and uh, you want to come up with this, you realize that for every time I, well, no, never mind. <laughs> no, I can't. Um, for every, uh, If you want to write a formula that relates these rates here, if you find the derivative of both sides, this is going to be the derivative of this, 2s times ds dt, right? You're, you've, you start with a formula that relates the quantities involved, and then you differentiate both sides with respect to whatever it is the rate you're using. Then usually it's going to be time, of course, but I guess you could come up with something else you're doing, right? But usually it's measuring a rate over time. So you start with a formula that relates the quantities, and then you generate for yourself a formula that relates the rates involved. This is, this is it, right? There's the formula that relates those rates. For this volume formula down here, maybe you didn't remember the, vo the volume of a sphere. If you... If you do now dv dt, and you do, maybe we should write out a couple steps here. d dt of this, of 4 thirds pi r cubed. We can take the constants and just move them outside, right? Would you like to see that? This is moving outside here, okay? You're going to move the constants outside. I will write those down here. So we have 4 thirds pi, but then we have the derivative of r cubed. The derivative of r cubed is, with respect to time is, we'll leave this here, 4 thirds pi. We have times 3r squared. That's as though you were doing it with respect to r, times dr dt. This is your formula. dv dt equals this. I think it would be a good idea to simplify it which, which we can write up here. You can you can you can multiply and divide by three, right? Four thirds times three, so you have dv dt. Let's do this so we don't get lost here. We'll make it a different color. dv dt equals four pi r squared times dr dt. I would like to draw your attention to something here. This is a circle up here. We had a circle which has an area of pi r squared. And we ended up with a formula that was that looked like this. dA dt, I'm going to write it again here. The rate of change of this is 2 pi r dr dt. The, yeah, the... The this if you're looking at the area here, the rate of change of the area is the what is this two pi r? What's that in terms of the circle? This is the circumference. So this is just a note maybe to make for this circle here. The rate of change of area is the circumference times the rate of change of radius. If you look at the sphere, it the same thing happens here. This happens to be the surface area of the sphere. You don't need to know this, but it's just something to notice if you want. The rate of change of volume is the rate of change of radius times the surface area of that cylinder. Okay? A lot of formulas you're going to find are going to work out like that. This formula relates each of these things. Think about what units would be involved, so you can do some unit analysis here. What units would what units would this have? What units would rate of change of volume with respect to time? What would this have? What would it be? Units uh, like, yeah, meters cubed per second or something like that. For example, right? What units would this side of the formula have? I'm going to write it out because it's getting really cramped in here. What units would the other side have here? If you have... If you have dv dt and you have 4 pi r squared, 
dr dt. What units would you have here? here? Here you have maybe meters cubed per second. Here you have, what would this be? No, no, well, let's keep the same units here. We got meter, if we're using, let's say if we're using meters and seconds, what would this have? Meters per second. What would, what would this stuff have? What would that have? You'd have meters and you'd square them. Would the, would the units work out on both sides? They would, right? You should, you should think about that as you go here. At the beginning of this, this is a pretty long set of uh, questions here that I've given you, but they all involve exactly the same thing here. You need to start with a formula relating the quantities. Think about if those quantities are variables or constants. Sometimes you're going to have like height and radius. You're going to have three things, but one of them is going to be a constant. Can you work through this right now, please, and come up with some of the things here? I've started giving you questions where you have to actually do something once you generate the formula. These questions involve using some of the formulas you developed on the first page. I don't know why I did this one again. Assuming this balloon is a sphere, it's the same. This is the same question as we did before, right? Assuming it's a sphere, 4 pi, 4 thirds pi r cubed, we did that already. But this is why I put this here. If you know some of the values, the instant that the, vo that the radius is 3 and the radius is increasing at a constant rate of 2 centimeters per second, Okay, the instant that the radius is is three centimeters. So you're blowing up the balloon. I wish I had brought a balloon here. You're blowing up the balloon. The instant that it's three centimeters. So you have two variables involved here. You have you have the radius of the balloon. So you're blowing up the balloon, and at the instant, assuming you have a long enough breath to keep it going at a constant rate. So the instant that the balloon is that size and that you're blowing into it at a rate of 2 centimeters per second. Oh, sorry, you can't blow at a rate of 2 centimeters per second. The, what, what is the blowing rate? What is that? Which thing in this situation is it? Let's think here. Well, we got, what did we have? We had 4 pi r squared d r dt. So I'm, think, I'm, I'm thinking of the wrong rate here. This is the rate that the that the, the radius is, of the balloon is expanding, right? This is the actual radius at any given time. This is the rate that the volume's changing. That's the rate that the air is going into it, right? This, you, whatever rate you're blowing into the balloon, that's how much volume you're adding at, a, at, a, at any given moment, right? This is, this is how fast you're blowing. <laughs> this is how fast the radius is changing. If you want to know this, you need to know the other two things here. In reality, actually, you'd probably work backwards. Is you could measure, you could measure how fast you're pumping air into the thing, and you can measure the other two things too. What do we have here? We have three centimeters, and we have what's the what's the rate of change of this? I I have to square it. You're right. And then I got to do two centimeters per second. And what do I get here for my rate here? So I got 9 squared, or sorry, 3 squared is 9. I am going to, I lost my, uh, no, it's good, 3 squared, 9, 36 times 2, 72, 72 pi centimeters cubed per second. Is that correct? That is correct. That's, think about the units as you're doing this. I think you're at the point where you can uh, you can do most of this, if not all of this, on your own with some assistance one-on-one -on -one or working together and stuff. As you work through this, the bar slowly gets higher, right? The, the, we step it up each page or question or whatever.